There's something about a kitchen that gets people together. And if you really want to see this in action, visit an Indian household. There always seems to be at least three generations present, especially with grannies preparing food for their grandchildren and spoiling them in the process. It's that kind of energy that inspired Yudhika to create this week's menu and invite a friend from Durban to join her in the kitchen. Catching up with a good friend is a treat for the soul and my food philosophy is cooking for friends is just like cooking for family. I have a special guest joining me for lunch today and I'm treating her to some of my treasured recipes. On the menu, old-fashioned Durban fish cakes, a traditional lamb curry with those melting potatoes and her favourite dessert, a cardamom creme brulee. For the fish cakes, I've got two tins of middle cut mackerel here and I've removed the bones already and to that, some boiled potato. I've grated this already, it's easier to mush. And garlic. Some green chilli, I like it quite spicy. To that finely chopped onion. Fresh coriander. An egg yolk. And one whole egg. teaspoon of fine salt going in as well and then cumin and coriander a teaspoon of cumin going in I'm using roasted cumin and roasted coriander two teaspoons of the coriander mix the ingredients together at first I'm using a wooden spoon to do this these are so easy to make you can actually do them quite often now chef's best tool your fingers you're going to need to use your fingers to mould this into patties. First roll them into a ball and then flatten them. I'm making them fairly large, so about two per person as a starter. There are so many different versions of the fish cake, but I have to say the Durban version is my favourite. It's spicy, that mashed potato holds these cakes together, along with the egg yolk and the egg as well. You should get about 12 to 16 out of this. I've made them slightly larger. Let's dip them in egg and coat them in crumbs. So I've got beaten egg going into a bowl. I'm using quite a deep bowl for this. And if your fish cakes are too soft, pop them in the refrigerator, let them chill and they firm up before you do this. Just coat them in the egg. It is messy work. And then into breadcrumbs. And pop them back onto the baking tray. Be very gentle when you're working with them. The messy part is now done. I'm going to leave these to chill and firm up in a refrigerator. And while that's chilling, I'm going to soak my fingers in some lemon juice. I have a little confession. I know I said I was going to prepare a traditional lamb curry for Cass, but actually it's also my favourite. So it's a bit for her and a bit for me as well. First ingredient, into the pan some sunflower oil. And to this some whole spices going in. I've got a bay leaf here and a cinnamon stick. The pan's been preheated already. The spices hit the oil and they start to sizzle. A few cardamom pods, I'd say about three. And now cumin seeds. Next, in goes the onion. And season the onion with coarse salt. About a teaspoon and a half of coarse salt going in. This is the most important step when you're making a curry and the reason is that onions not only add flavour but they also thicken up the sauce or gravy as we call it. That looks about perfect. Now, curry leaves. And these make your home smell amazing. I also add some curry leaves at the end when I'm garnishing. Ginger and garlic paste going in. Red chilli. I like it fairly spicy and so does Cass. So, about two and a half tablespoons. Stir that in for a few seconds. Next, the lamb. I'm using a combination of knuckles and leg. 
When I was growing up, we actually used to cook mainly leg of lamb, but I love using knuckles in a lamb curry. Stir the lamb to coat in the fried chili and onion paste. And just keep stirring. It's almost like you're stir frying the curry. The lamb's sealed. Now add the powdered spices. A level teaspoon of ground cumin. A teaspoon of ground coriander. Some garam masala. And a pinch of turmeric. Just a pinch. I'm using organic turmeric because it doesn't have the colouring in. Now I put the spices on top of the meat once it's been sealed. And that prevents those fine spices from actually burning and giving your curry a bit of flavour. In goes some boiled water. Once the boiled water goes into the lamb, a sauce should form immediately and those onions dissolve. As you can see, it's quite smooth already. Leave the lamb to simmer until it's about 90% cooked and then I'm going to add the potatoes. Let's get on with the creme brulee. Creme brulee has to be one of the simplest desserts to make. First ingredient into the pan, some fresh cream. For a variation on this recipe, you can use coconut cream and fresh cream as well. Flavour the cream with some cardamom pods. I love the flavour. Vanilla paste going in. You can also use a vanilla pod for this. Say about five mils of vanilla paste. I love the black speckles from the vanilla in this creme brulee. From the moment the cream hits the pan, you just know it's going to be a fabulous dessert. It's important to move the cream around and scrape the bottom of the pan. That prevents the cream from scorching and burning. Once the cream has come up to the boil, egg yolks go into a mixing bowl. Sugar goes in. And use a whisk to work the ingredients together. It's important not to do this in advance or the egg yolks tend to harden. The hot cream going into the egg yolks and sugar. And it's important here to work quite quickly. Another tip for you is always add the hot cream to the egg yolks. If you add the egg yolks to the hot cream, you're going to end up with scrambled eggs instead of a creme brulee. That would be a disaster. Now use a sieve and just pass the liquid back into a pan or a bowl. This is to remove any eggy bits. I'm pouring the hot cream back into the jug. This makes it easier to pour into ramekins. The kettle's come up to the boil. Boiled water going into the roasting pan around the brulees. And this helps the custard set as it's baking. Also prevents it from curdling. This goes into a preheated oven at 140 degrees Celsius for 45 to 50 minutes. Let's check on the lamb. That looks delicious. It's time to add the potatoes. Mix that around. A little more water going in. And leave that to simmer. Before Cass gets here and sees my dirty kitchen, I'm going to tidy up. The creme brulees are ready. They should still be slightly wobbly in the centre when you check them. Now that's perfect. These are a surprise for Cass, so I'm going to take them and leave them where she can't see them. The potatoes should be ready. They should change colour, almost orangey. Some tomatoes going in. I generally add them to the centre of the pot so I don't break up the potatoes. Hello. Hi, Cass. <laughs> Lovely to have you. Welcome. Lovely to be here. That smells amazing. I've, I've made all the things that I think you'd like to eat. And the dessert is a surprise for you. Oh, I love surprises. Okay. So we've got lamb curry with those beautiful soft potatoes and I've even made fish cakes because you really are a special guest. Thank you. I'm gonna fry them off now Now that you're here. I've reduced the chili just a touch. I'm not sure how spicy you eat your food these days. Spicy is good. Spicy is good. About four green chilies in here. That oh should boy. do. <laughs> 
Right, so I've just heated up some oil in a pan and spray and cook goes in first to prevent these cakes from sticking. That's a good tip. It starts to sizzle already. So gently put them in. So Cass, my kids love to cook and they love to eat as well. How about yours? They love eating and they're starting to get into the spicy side of life, especially the two boys. I love cooking, I never get a chance to do it every day, but when I do, a good mutton curry, a good butter chicken, oh, wow. and if mum sends home samosas, I'll fry them up. <laughs> they smell amazing. I'm gonna have to write this recipe down for you. I'm going to just come eat here. I think <laughs> that's a good idea. Why not? <laughs> oh wow, that's amazing. I can't wait, I'll see you just now. Yep, go through to the dining room. These are really golden brown, they're crisp and beautiful. I serve them with some lemon wedges. Cass is in for a real treat, but let me plate up now. I've been so looking forward to having you here. The fish cakes. Wow. And that lovely, luscious lamb curry. The main <laughs> attraction. The colours yes. are phenomenal. Melting moment potatoes, yummy. Movie soakers. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely, let's dish up. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Mm. How does it match up to mums? What I'm getting is this amazing spicy undertone and the potato. Okay, let me serve you some curry. I love it. I think this potato has your name on it. Time to tuck in. Surprise! I can't believe you remember. Of course I remember. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Kaz, I'm going to write your name down in my diary for next month and we're definitely going to meet again for a curry and a creme brulee. It's a date. <laughs>